escalation in violence on the street and in the community for months now. We've been pleading with the mayor um, as we've seen increased violence. I guess Randall Island is becoming a much, much problem than uh, anybody anticipated that it would be. But then again, at the same time, though, it looks like these protests that are going on in Clinton Hill, uh, obviously people have had enough of this type of stuff. Now, guys, we're going to be covering all of that in this video, so make sure you guys stick around for the full bit. we got a lot to go into. Also, one more thing, too, before we get started. Uh, I'm going to try to get two videos out tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be another day where I've got to go to the doctor, but of course, it's going to be one of those procedures, or not really a procedure, but uh, one of those appointments to make sure everything was good to go for the previous surgery. And of course, we've also got the other surgery to look forward to. So bear with me really quick. we got a lot to cover in this video. I'm going to try to make it as quick and as concise and as informative as possible. Make sure you guys stick around and let's go ahead and get it. confirms a 45-year-old woman was shot in the face and the back. She later died. Police also say a 32-year-old man was shot in the throat and a 31-year-old woman was shot in the back. Now, both are expected to be okay, but as of this morning, police are still looking for whoever shot these people and why this happened. But there's been several instances of violent at or around this particular migrant shelter. Just last month, police say a 25-year-old was stabbed by two migrants at the shelter. And back in April, NYPD arrested five men after a brutal attack. The pack of migrants are accused of surrounding the victim in bed, punching and scratching them. A security guard was also injured. And New York City has implemented a curfew for migrant shelters in response to complaints from residents about violence and noise at all hours of the day. Well, it is election year. And it being an election year, obviously a lot of campaign ads are going to be coming out. And a lot of those campaign ads are going to be throwing a lot of things at you. However, I think the thing that is uh, going to be at the forefront this year, and of course, I'm pretty sure you guys already know where I'm going with this, especially based on the thumbnails, exactly something I've been covering for the past year and a half. And it has been the border crisis or the immigrant crisis, migration crisis, whatever you might want to call it. And of course, its effects on New York City and Chicago. However, there has been a recent event that has occurred in the city at Randall Island near a migrant shelter that once again puts the border czar front and center once again. You're considered the most liberal United States senator. I, I Somebody said that, and it actually was Mike Pence on the debate stage. Are you for defunding the police? How are you defining defund the police? We need to reimagine how we are achieving public safety in America. Listen, I think there's no question that we've got to critically re-examine ICE and its role and the way that it is being administered and the work it is doing, and we need to probably think about starting from scratch. Now, guys, you just saw that little bit of Kamala Harris, and, of course, you guys saw the clip at the very beginning of what's actually going on in New York City, and, of course, the clip from Fox News was the one that I used because this was actually the one that was used this past weekend. I did use it in the previous video, but now we've got some updates to that case. But still, though, it's the effects of what's actually going on in her job performance when it comes to the border that's leading to the sudden outcry that you guys are going to see. However, before we get to said outcry, let's go ahead and talk about the border crisis for a very, very quick second, and then go ahead and talk about exactly what happened. Then we'll get to the outcry towards the end of the video. But I want you guys to stick around very closely because obviously the border is going to be an issue that's going to be front and center and of course, it's turning off a lot of people, even people on the left, who are starting to realize that this is a problem and that, uh, yeah, come Queen Lee Emhoff is actually responsible for it. That shooting is getting a lot of attention at this hour and a whole lot of police activity on Randall's Island. That is where this happened. Let's get right over to Lisa Evers on the scene for us. Lisa, what's the very latest that we know so far? Well, Bianca, a massive manhunt is underway, according to police sources, for the shooter and accomplice who shot and killed a woman and wounded two others here early this morning. Now, you can see the crime scene behind me. There's a lot of blue crime scene tape sealing it off. We've been seeing detectives here all morning working the scene, looking for evidence and any information they can use to put together a timeline of what happened. Now, here's what police are telling us at this early stage in the investigation. About 3.30 this morning, officers responded Island to a field 71 which is under the RFK bridge and very close to that migrant shelter. Uh, first responders found a 44-year-old woman with multiple gunshot wounds to her face and neck. She was pronounced dead at Harlem Hospital. A 32-year-old man who was shot in his throat and a 31-year-old woman shot in her back are in stable condition, both at Harlem Hospital. Now, police are looking for the shooter who they believe got away in a car with New Mexico license plates, as well as the accomplice who got away, they believe, at this point on the moped. Now, this is 
is very early in the investigation. They're still collecting a lot of vital evidence to this, talking with everybody they possibly can to try to find out what happened here. We'll have much more for you coming up on the fire. Okay, now guys, this one was the initial report from a few days ago. You obviously heard that. Two people got shot outside of a migrant shelter, Randall Island, Brooklyn. People getting transport, uh, transport to Harlem. But of course, there was an update to this. But before we get to that update and what we're now finding out, because it's actually been reported that it looks like it was revenge killing, which, by the way, should suggest to you guys that obviously there's something going on here, probably gang related. I mean, we have done videos on this before. And given the fact that now you've got this issue with Venezuela right now, the military is apparently uh, refusing to get involved. And now he's calling on the police to arrest his political opposition, the opposition that won his election. He's declaring victory in the face of a massive landslide loss. I'm pretty sure you guys can see that these issues are going to be much, much worse, especially when it comes to Venezuelan gangs and certain Venezuelans that are, of course, here illegally that are in fact committing crimes. People who live in cities like say New York or Chicago, which by the way are liberal bastions that do vote Democrat heavily and do probably still intend on voting for the current uh, Democrat party nominee, whom by the way was the border czar, which by the way a lot of people are going to try to say that she was never the border czar even though we've already shown you guys that are trying to scrub the internet of that information and of course all the proof will be provided in the many, 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 many glorious campaign ads that you will see from the Trump team this cycle. Yes, this border issue is, in fact, an issue that has gotten a lot worse, and Kamala Harris appears to be holding the back. But, of course, you're now finding out, and you guys will see here in a second, that this killing was actually a killing that was, well, let's just say, done out of revenge, which obviously suggests that uh, it's a gangland problem. Let's listen. Steve, there's a large crowd out here last night. A number of those individuals were migrants staying at the migrant shelter next door. It was a festive mood, we were told, until the shots rang out. And tonight, police tell us they believe the motive was retaliation for the armed robbery of the gunman just the day before where his necklace was stolen. There was roughly 50 people celebrating the presidential election in Venezuela. In a split second, the celebration in the early hours of Monday morning turned into a deadly shooting. Police and ambulances rushed to the scene, finding three people shot, two women and a man. The two women were staying at the migrant center on Randall's Island, where violence has broken out several times since just the beginning of this year. Monday morning's shooting took place outside it. A male Hispanic comes up from about 100 feet and fires into that crowd. So right retaliation feet. for a previous robbery. Now, I could already hear somebody on the, uh, the pro-migrant side saying that this person was provoked. But I can also hear somebody on the other side saying that the migrant provoked him. I have warned about this in previous videos, that this type of stuff was going to occur, that uh, blacks in these areas, especially these poorer communities in the larger cities, uh, we're not going to get along with the new migrant population that's been thrusted upon them. And don't worry, we'll get to the populace here in a second and how people think or how people are responding to all this type of stuff. And, of course, we've been talking about this for a while. The fact of the matter is this right here. The crime has obviously been imported, and it's making the crime that already exists here much, much worse. And, by the way, it's going to lead to more problems down the road gangland re related and of course factions will be created as a result of this do you really and truly want multiple games multiple factions forming inside these very very large cities i mean my god we've had the lake and raleigh situation we had a guy that was connected to murders in new york who got arrested in arizona because the district attorney of new york alvin bragg did not do his job and let some of these guys go i'm just simply saying that this is obviously a problem and of course it's a problem that i think the current administration especially kamala harris owns just saying but let us get back to the rest of the news report. 44-year-old woman had gunshot wounds to her head and neck. She was declared dead at the hospital. The two other victims, a 32-year-old woman and 31-year-old man, were also hit and also rushed to the hospital. Witnesses tell police the gunman fled on a moped. Those who visit Randall's Island seem far from surprised. On this side, in the front end, it seems very erratic. There's a lot of people hanging around outside, riding their motor mopeds. On Monday afternoon, about 12 hours after 
after the shooting, a convoy of NYPD cars, including tow trucks, descended onto Randall's Island for what police called a quality of life enforcement, removing dozens of vehicles, including unregistered cars, mopeds, scooters, and motorcycles, some of which were reported stolen. When it comes to ghost cars, paper plates, and mopeds, we've been speaking about this for the better part of two years now, and how it's probably our number one quality of life complaint throughout the city and how it conflates with certain crimes being committed. So robbery, shootings, you'll see the getaway car being moped. The guy right here basically said that it shouldn't surprise anybody, which by the way, should be a pretty strong signal that uh, obviously some people are getting desensitized to it and it started to become reality to some people out there. But I really love hearing about how it was that the vehicles that they moved out of there, a lot of them were reported as stolen. Yeah, it seems to me like it's not just murder, it's carjackings, it's people stealing vehicles across the, uh, across the, uh, city itself, all five boroughs. But you know, here's the thing that really gets me about this entire situation. This entire situation could have been 100% totally prevented if you had just simply closed the border. I mean, I can understand leaving the border open for like the first two weeks of your administration or whatnot, and then all of a sudden signing an executive order and closing it. But this border has been open since really 2021. And if you guys remember correctly, it was the Democrats who were running on free health care for migrants or people coming across the border that really kind of led to the sense of entitlement that we had that we could just simply cross your border. Which, of course, is going to come up in a video later on this week, especially given all the stuff that's been going on in Venezuela. However, the thing that I want to shift to now is how people in the city are actually responding to this. And we've talked about this before. People are not feeling exactly what's going on. They're not exactly down with the migrants, which makes you wonder what's gonna happen in the future or this year because of this. Well, let's look at this first part. Coming together, asking for help. They say migrant shelters in their neighborhood are leading to violence and bringing in dangerous gang members. And just this past weekend, three people were shot, two of them died. Eyewitness News reporter Jim Dolan with more on what community members are asking for. In Clinton Hill, migrants from a 4,000 bed shelter nearby fill the sidewalks. They sit on park benches, on stoops and curbs, under the BQE overpass. So many people crowded in here, residents feared what was coming. We have been witnessing the escalation in violence on the street and in the community for months now. We've been pleading with the mayor um, as we've seen increased violence. Well, seeing how it is that Mayor Eric Adams has already cut the sanitation department, he's already cut the uh, police department, it doesn't seem to me that they can really and truly do anything about it. But then again, at the same time, though, they more than likely were not going to do anything anyways. As Anton Daniels explained to a group of voters who were tribalistically going to vote for Kamala Harris because she's black, and of course, him being a black man, said, no, 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 I'm not going to be voting for this right here. I'll probably link that video in the description box, the video I did on that in the description box. It looks to me like people have quite frankly had enough of this crap, but let's keep going. This was going to be inevitable. And on Sunday night, it came. Two people were murdered here, a third critically injured just outside one of the two adjacent shelters in Clinton Hill. It is a neighborhood now pleading for help. And the lease! And the lease! That's what Residents I came together tonight to demand the city provide more protection for them now and move to downsize the two enormous and crowded migrant shelters in Clinton Hill. There is simply no universe where you can cram 4,000 vulnerable people together safely. Do you believe us now? How many more murders? You can't do exactly what it is that guy said at the very end. You can't just cram people in there. And once you see two people get shot, obviously people are going to start having a problem with this. Now, there is a side to this argument that is okay with the migrants being in there. However, when an issue begins to actually affect you and your neighborhood, your mind's probably going to change. I've been saying from the get-go that the border needed to be closed, that you needed a border wall. And I'm one of the few conservatives out there online that's relatively lenient on the topic of immigration. I like the idea of legal immigration, but I don't like the idea of illegal immigration. 
I've been saying for a while this area was going to be a problem. It was going to create jealousy within the communities. Not only was it going to create jealousy within the communities, but it was eventually going to lead to massive crime. It was going to lead to retaliatory strikes. And now people are finally beginning to see what the hell is going on here. However, when the issue begins to affect school children, parents will eventually begin to take notice of what's going on. Now, this sex segment is a little bit longer than the previous, but of course, I'm pretty sure you guys will see at the very, very end of this, especially with a woman who's going to take up most of the time in this uh, piece, you're going to see that, uh, yeah, people are beginning to pay attention and know people don't care about cat lady comments made by a vice presidential candidate back in 2022. But let's roll this last part. Some here are frightened now just to go outside. Now it feels like that whole and section that's doing that. and that's what is just not available to the community asking our local elected anymore. That they so our parks are not available to can't go there. anymore. Search out you and can't give us a there. list of all of the empty you can't go to the parks. that there are. Police say the man in this video is responsible for the two Sunday night murders. In the video, he appears to be putting a gun in his waistband. The mayor today didn't offer much hope, saying police are looking at a violent Venezuelan street gang as the people behind the shootings. They're extremely dangerous. We're dealing with violent individuals that are not representative of the overwhelming number of people who are coming here. Um, as migrant and asylum seekers. No one has yet been arrested for those murders on Sunday night, and that definitely hasn't made anyone here feel any safer. Police say they know who they're looking for. They just haven't found him yet. Clinton Hill. I sit here and talk about the mayor and talk about the fact that the parks aren't safe, which, by the way, a lot of those kids go in those parks and parents, you know, they want their kids to go to those parks because so that way they can remain active. They themselves would like to run through there. All that type of good stuff that you would do, especially if it's a park and you're, uh, your town. I mean, I don't really have that many parks where I live at, and I need to do a lot more walking based upon my current medical situation. But you see, if the parks aren't safe, people can't get out, and people are going to feel safe going to a certain side of the town. Of course, maybe there are areas of town where you maybe need to get there, not only to buy groceries or get medications, that type of good stuff there, but now people don't feel safe going over there. These people are looking for some form of security, but because we're over here taking care of migrants, people who are here illegally, guess what we have to do? We have to shorten everything up, give out debit cards, shorten the city's budget, eliminate the police department, eliminate the sanitation department, which is absolutely nasty and disgusting. And then to go on top of that right there, we got this gang problem, gang violence, and the mayor himself even admitting that the gangs are coming in here and taking over the city of New York. But you got dopey people like this right here saying they want to legalize them. To have more resources in the states and cities that are supporting migrants. And I believe we need to create a pathway to citizenship. All of that is a part of what we need to do for comprehensive immigration reform. Kamala Harris will work with Congress and get that done. Okay, yeah, guys, I'm going to play that one more time for you, okay? To have more resources in the states and cities that are supporting migrants. And I believe we need to create a pathway to citizenship. All of that is a part of what we need to do for comprehensive immigration reform. Kamala Harris will work with Congress and get that done. Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas, as former President Trump would call her. You know, this woman would also later on during her interview would also say, look, we're with you. We're with you, the illegal. She actually said that. As if to say that we're with you, the criminal. You see, even people who are here who haven't gotten their citizenship, even they don't want to hear that. I mean, it's gotten to a point now where illegal immigrants want these illegal immigrants to go back home. They want them to go back across the border. Let me say this really quick, okay? Before we go any further, before we close this video out, because we spent time talking about the incident. We spent time talking about the people's reaction, the decision, what should actually be done, and how it is that the city has failed, how it is the federal government has failed. We've talked about this in this video, but I want to go ahead and say this right now. In yesterday's video that I did on J.D. Vance's comments and would cat ladies come out like crazy, what I wanted to get across in that video is I don't think people really and truly care about comments that a vice presidential candidate made back in 2022 about childless women, meaning women who choose not to have children, not talking about women who can't have children. I don't think people care about that because guess what? The issues of the day are right in front of people's faces actually affecting their lives. So please spare us all the media hype and all the media crap. I think people are fully aware of what's going on here today, and they're not buying exactly what it is that the media is telling them. And to go on top of that, Hispanics are tired of the stigma too. Let me go ahead and say this before we close the video, okay? 
Mexican Americans or those who are here that came from Mexico, they're normally here for work. And like I said, I'm not okay with illegal immigration or illegal immigrants, but I understand why people want to come to America. I get that. But they're not liking the situation because all the migrants that are coming in are taking their jobs from them and, of course, also depressing their wages. It's one of the biggest reasons why Trump is seeing a shift amongst that community. And you've also got Hispanics that are not from Mexico who are from South America, from Panama, from Central America, and of course, Cuba, you know, Puerto Rico. When they see what the hell was going on with the Trump case, they automatically think to themselves this is communism. They're seeing something going on in America, and it looks like everybody agrees that the migrants have got to go. Now, who the hell owns this? Well, the current Biden administration does, but did he not make Kamala Harris borders are? I mean, once again, do please, I need to remind you? Please, please, spare us. Spare us all the crap that we're hearing right now about, uh, oh, uh, women are going to be pissed off, single ladies are going to be pissed off because something somebody said about them being cat ladies and childless and directing U.S. policy and directing the country and uh, pushing it to the ground. Spare us the BS. We got other problems to deal with. As you guys can see, the migrant crisis, once again, is right back in our faces. And, of course, it's right back in a lot of other people's faces who, quite frankly, probably should not be dealing with it, even though I have said that they voted for it, so therefore they own it. But, of course, a lot of these people probably didn't even really vote for it. But still, at the same time, though, yeah, this right here is obviously a problem, and I think we got bigger fish to fry than what somebody said two years ago. With that right there being said, guys, please... Leave a comment in the comment section. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comment section. I'll see you guys later.